Hi everybody, Linda Carroll here from my studio, Gather of Great Things, and today we are going to continue on with our concertina journal made out of junk mail. It is Waste Not Wednesday, so um, I'm going to be videoing this in snippets so, um, so you can see step by step what I'm doing. Um, I did go ahead and masking tape reinforce all of my creases, all of my folds throughout the journal. And then on the pages that were shiny, I used a sanding block and just went over it lightly to uh, get rid of that get rid of that gloss finish because that will tend to um, resist the uh, any kind of gesso or paint that you put on. Now the matte pages, I didn't have to do anything. I just uh, you know I don't have to prepare them by sanding them. But the glossy pages, you really should go ahead and sand and get them ready to uh, put your base coat on. I'm going to use some gesso and some gessos are thicker than others. Um, this gesso I ordered, I don't remember from who, but it's Premier Gesso and this is actually a little thin. And I think I'm going to take it off of the top. I shook it really, really well. And I'm going to get as much water out of my brush as I can. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next page with this gesso and we'll see what happens. Let's try another coat of this. Now, if you if it doesn't cover, it's okay. Um, you might want to do a you know, like we did the master board backgrounds. Um, in the in the decollage that we did. Or you may want to cover this with um, some of your own artwork as well. Okay, let's go for coat number three and see what happens. If you use a heat gun to dry your gesso, um, be careful because it will uh, bubble up if it gets too hot. And it can leave some really neat um, texture and uh, on your background, but it may also peel up. So I had a few pieces right here, and I just kind of smoothed it down with my fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my journal, putting on my background coats, and then I'll be back. Okay? Okay, I have my my journal um, coated with a gesso. I decided to go ahead and use gesso through the entire um, journal. And I, I had some pretty interesting things happen as I was painting the gesso. Uh, I found I wanted to use areas of some of the pieces of junk mail. So I uh, left this 
scratchy area of guys in shorts and high socks in here. And when I put gesso on these two pages, they obviously were not totally dry when I put them together. But I got some really great grungy texture in here, which started talking to me. And then when I looked at this one, I had left some of the background color in here. And so my colors were starting to come to the forefront. And also I got some more really good grunge. This came off a little bit too deep. But that's okay. We're going to do some collage in here so I can take care of that. But I intentionally got my heat tool close to the gesso and it did bubble up and give me some great textures. Right here and over here. This one, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a really great um, texture and it's over the world's word sleep that's upside down and I love this texture up in here so decided to keep that and then if we go back the other way um, again some nice textures but this book is just screaming out to me to be grungy and full of um, mixed media and layers and mark making and you know I, I keep hearing come on now go for it and see what happens Just see what happens you know one thing that's great about doing journals like this it's just paper you know, so you can experiment, you can have fun and play with it, and and just see what happens. I mean, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you layer over top of it, or if you really don't like it, throw it in the trash or in the recycle. I mean, it's paper. Have fun. And I love it when my journals really start to talk to me and tell me what they want to be and this one wants to be grungy so what can i use to make it grungy from junk mail well i've got a whole lot of junk mail i have my stencils of my numbers and my letters i have my postage stamps i have my grungy texture backgrounds um, I, ha I have a lot of stuff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do some gathering of some great things and, uh, and then I'll come back and show you what I found. I also found an old, um, box with artwork that I did back in, I think 2015 and some of it I'm not real crazy about but it'll make some good fodder for this journal so I'm gonna go gathering and I'll be right back okay I have been gathering things together for a while and I went through some of my old um, artwork and it's kind of funny because a lot of it I even had forgotten that I did. Um, and what I pulled are mostly texture pieces and pieces with mark making on them. So I think since this particular journal is calling to me so loudly to be grungy, I'm going to be able to use these pieces, but I am probably going to have to um, distress them uh, somewhat to make them more grungy. But they certainly have the layers and they have collage on them already. The backgrounds of all of these pieces were done with collaged papers. And then a lot of mark making, some stamping, and that kind of thing. So if you can gather together some of your own 
artwork that you'd like to repurpose, um, this is a good way to use that artwork. And then I also gathered together some of my junk mail that we've been using. And I have a lot of different textures uh, from the insides of envelopes. This is a new one that I got today with these. that probably make your eyes go kind of crazy, but uh, it's a blue, which is something new. So I have all this, and I also have my little box that I've kept some type in. I still have some of this text uh, that would make good texture. Um, I have a couple buttons, some pieces from calendars, some stripes, and um, I think my theme in this particular journal is going to be go wild. <laughs> um, go wild and go grungy. So I don't have any plans really for this journal except that I want to use a lot of texture. I want it to be grungy. I want it to have a lot of layers. Um, and so we're just going to play. You know, working in journals gives you so much freedom in that if you want this to be only for you, that's fine. It can be a container for your thoughts, for your feelings, um, for your emotions, and that is one way that you can look at a journal. Uh, some things you may not want to talk about, but you may want to get them out of the inside of you, out of your heart, out of your mind. So a journal is a really good place to put those things. And it's, it's almost like magic. Once you put those things elsewhere, and make it something that you can touch, you can see, um, it will speak to you. For some reason, it helps me um, deal with whatever it is that I want to put in my journal. Um, it's, it's almost, like I said, it's almost magic the way that works. So, I'm going to work in this journal on double spreads and I'm going to do my cover last because I'm not really sure what's going to happen inside this this particular journal. So <clears throat> these two pages I have these the boys um, back of them I can see part of their arms I can see their legs and I really like the way that it is already kind of um, framed. And this one has a lot of the grungy texture from the gesso. And when I took my pages and stuck them together, this is what happened and I really really like it and I'm not going to start at the beginning of this one and just go through page by page I'm going to just skip around and see what happens so on these two pages I'm going to show you what I did with my artwork I um, used these punches and I punched out a number of circles from one of my pieces of artwork and I really love them. Um, you know, the only way that you can really get images like this is to just put layer upon layer upon layer of paint, papers, inks, 
pencils, crayons, whatever it is you're working with. But that is the only way that you can get these beautiful uh, grungy pieces. So I cut out a number of different sizes of these. This one has a hand in it. Um, and then I have, these are one and a half inches, and then these are an inch. And I have a face that I did in another paper piece of artwork. Some of them are really subtle. Some of them are a little bit brighter. So I have that size. And then I have these little tiny um, pieces that I just couldn't throw the paper away. So I cut out some very tiny circles. And I had cut out a couple squares um, using this punch uh, for my black and white collage that I did. So I still have those to play with. So I have these, I'm going to call them coins. I have these coins that are maybe. Then I have some stamps that just happen to be out and about. And then I have some other pieces of artwork. This is a background that I cut the circles out of, and this would work really great in a in a collage background this i had um i don't think it was on a piece of mail but i had a couple of these left this is uh from another piece of my artwork it was um artwork that i did for a journal cover and this was from another piece of my artwork and then this little rectangle was from a piece of the artwork. I have some corrugated cardboard that is black that I can work with. And, and then I also have some masking tape. And I'm going to experiment with this and, and see if I can use it somehow differently than I have been using it. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. So, as I said, your journal can be a container for something. It can be a playground for you to express your thoughts and feelings. But most of all, it's a place to play and use your imagination and your intuition and whatever thoughts and feelings might be coming up to the surface is how I look at it. So I'm just going to start by tearing some of these pieces and this is kind of gray. Do I want to use this? I don't think so. I think that I'm going to start and I just want some ripped papers. I'm going to use my glue stick. I'm not going to use um, matte medium or uh, gel medium or PVA because I want the paper to still be activated or react with the other materials I'm going to be using on this piece and notice I left an edge that I didn't put the um, glue stick all the way out to the edge I 
left some space on the edges to tuck things under. And I am gonna let some of that overlap the edge. And I really, really want to grunge this up. For some reason, it just feels... And it's almost telling me that it wants... Not almost, it is telling me that it really wants to be grungy. And sometimes I find it difficult to do that. I have to admit having been a graphic designer and everything needed to be precise and square and um, exact. Sometimes I have trouble uh, getting grungy. So I'm going to think back to when I was a little girl, and I, I, I loved to play outside, and I would get dirty and crawl around on my hands and knees and get grungy and dirty, and, and I'm going to put myself back and or try to put myself back in that frame of mind and heart and imagine myself able to play just play you know right now I'm not thinking about any rules or anything I'm just I'm just gonna play And I'm going to see what happens. Now, you want to be, one thing you do, do need to be careful of is where the fold is. And I don't want to put a lot of paper there because it will make it more difficult for the book or the journal to to close so but since this is on the fold I am gluing it down all the way to the edges and that didn't work really well I may have to use a little bit stronger glue or let it dry before I fold it back. Okay, I've got to start here. I want to really grunge this background up. So I'm taking my, my tea and I'm just gonna spritz this Oh wow, look at those textures. And again, if you don't have any dyes or anything like that, you can make a strong cup of tea. Any pattern right here. It looks like a flower. And this does too. I love that. Okay, and you can see how since we didn't have any glue on the top of these, the way that it has started to absorb the uh, dye or ink, I have dried marigold, which I think, and I'm just going to do some more magic writing. Just mark making.
And some dots. Kind of blot up the extra, and I like the uh, texture that the baby wipe makes. And you can get you can get baby wipes at the Dollar Tree. That much I know. I'm liking this a lot. I don't know if you can see how these dots are going to be darker, a bit darker, excuse me, in the middle than on the outside. And how this sticky part is picking up the dyes and everything. Looks great. Okay, now let's. You can see this is much too bright to go with this page. So I'm gonna sit that over there and let it dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna see what happens when I spritz my tea on here. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, I love this. Wow. Okay. It's only paper, right? So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to cut around this uh, kind of flower um, kind of mandala piece here. I think I've got to cut it out of this before I can really cut it, but I don't. I want it there. I think I like it down here because this looks like it's just dripping right down across it. else do I want? I don't know that that's going to stay there for sure. So I'm going to not glue it down yet because I have so much more rich, beautiful stuff. 
This is this is scrungy, but. That doesn't go on this piece. I think I need more of this. Now it's still a little wet. Now I like this one better than that one. So I'm just gonna go around and cut these pointy things off. Oh man, look at that. That's a perfect flower. I think that has to move up here. Well, this one is so pretty. I'm going to be a little bit more careful in my defining it. Right, we're getting there. Mm. I love that. Okay, I love that a lot. I'm going to use my heavy-duty glue because this is on uh, mixed-media paper and it's pretty thick.
Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like this. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. That was a nice, happy accident. Let's see what happens. That really set that black into the background instead of it being so dominant. And it also added to the grunge. Now, I won't do that on the paper because that is, um, it's not coated with anything. It's not coated with gesso. But right here, it looks like this flower has continued on this piece of board. See what happens here. I'm going to commit to these two pieces. This really is at the ugly stage. <laughs> um, you know, when you're working on things, they'll go through different stages. They won't be beautiful all at once, you know, and especially when you're working on a um, mixed media piece like this, you'll find that you really need to let it grow kind of on its own and let it be ugly because you can continue to transform your piece and let it let it talk to you tell let it tell you what it wants and kind of go from there.
Okay, I'm back and I thought I was videotaping, but my memory was full. So I kind of, you know, kind of missed a couple things. Um, first off, I wasn't really happy with all of the uh, texture back here in the junk mail that we added. So I used an acrylic paint, um, light mocha, and with a dry brush, I went over these pieces, and you can still see little bits of it um, in the background, and I like that. I just kind of knocked it further into the background. And then <clears throat> I decided to do some stamping uh, over the entire thing to kind of pull it together. And I used a couple different stamps. Um, most of them are from Tim Holtz, uh, Stampers Anonymous, but you can use any stamps. I like text stamps because it, I can put them on really dark or really subtle. I did add a couple um, butterfly stamps, and I liked those. Um, and these are my two favorite stamps. They're well worn and used, and they're just written uh, handwriting. So those are the ones that I used. I don't know where they came from. I've had them for a really long time. And <clears throat> I like what's going on. But I think I need to add some shadows around some of my pieces, like down here. So I'm just using my Stabilo pencil. And you already know that is water soluble, water activated. So I'm just kind of going along the edge here. And then you can use a water pen. I'm just using a paintbrush and going in and activating that stabilo just to give me a little bit of a shadow down here along the side of this collage piece and I want some more up here around this circle that I added and then right up the top and maybe around here too let's see what happens And I'm adding just a little bit of subtle color back here. Um, I'm using my Stabilo. You can use watercolor. <clears throat> and just adding some more interest here in the background. I really like the way the textures coming up on here. And 
that's grungy and yummy. And a bit mysterious. Okay, I think I'm going to add uh, some mark making. So, if you have symbols or doodles that um, you like to use that are you consider your own or that are important to you. I'm kind of partial to dots myself. Okay, and I think <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is add a little bit more grunge. So, my black paints and my fan brush and I need to really make this thin a little bit thinner that off and I think I am finished if you want to you can add words in here um, what do you think I kind of like that I don't know that I like it with the white background quite as much. Let's see. Let's put a little bit of tea on it. See what happens. Why not?
Okay, I think I'm happy with this. So, this is our first spread in our junk mail concertina journal, which was calling to me to be grungy, and um, I think I managed to do that. Um, I love all the textures. I transformed some of my old artwork into something brand new that to me is a lot more exciting than what it was and I experimented with a lot of techniques that I enjoyed. I had fun playing with all of these things and, um, and I like the grunge. I like the grunge. It's, it's really fun. Especially when you go in and start looking at the details, like in these circles and triangles. There's a lot of, a lot to look at. So, for now, I'm going to say this is completed. You know, I always go back and look at my journals and um, decide if, yes, that's the way this one's going to stay or if I'm going to change it up. So we'll see what happens. Um, I love this one. Uh, the colors are really <clears throat> kind of wild, but they're starting to grow on me. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great day or evening, whatever the case may be. And if you would, if you haven't subscribed, please do just hit the little subscribe button it really helps getting my videos out to other people. You can share um, my video so other people will look at it. Leave a comment. I learn as much from you as you're hopefully learning from me when I read your comments. And, um, and ring the bell if you want to get notified of my future videos. So I'm going to say many blessings to you. Bye for now.